What's up guys, Quinn here in the flesh. I recently saw this really cool video collage effect and I'm gonna try and figure out how to do it and show you how to do it because that's what I'm that's what I'm here for. I feel like you could use this effect in a lot of different mediums, fashion, music videos, especially maybe some sort of a lifestyle thing. If you're trying to go a little bit more eccentric with your content, this could be really cool. Let's jump in with some test footage and try to make this effect come to life. So after playing around a bit, I've realized that this effect works best on locked off footage, basically where the camera isn't moving around too much. So if you're shooting for this effect, this is great to know. Here we are in our premiere timeline and we have some stock footage. Cool male DJ behind the turntables. Love that, very accurate. We're gonna move this clip to our second layer and turn the visibility of that layer off. This way we have our main clip here to work and pull from. I'm gonna go ahead and add a white background, so head over to new item, color matte, okay, and change the color to white. Drag that under our clip. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this main clip by holding down option and dragging it up a layer. And this layer is what we're gonna use to chop up and build out our scene. With this clip selected, head over to effect controls and under opacity, this is where we'll be creating our mask. You have different options for shapes, but I'm gonna go with rectangles. Now we can start playing around with these masks. So I'll go ahead and move my mask over to this corner. Start by building out these turntables over here and you can adjust the mask to whatever shape you want it to be. I'm gonna scale this down proportionally, so to do that, put your cursor at the edge till you see these arrows. Click Shift, you'll see it change to these straight looking arrows, and drag that down. Pick a selection and then maybe I'll scale this up a little. I also like to put the mask feather down to zero, so it's more of a sharp edge. Now we'll repeat this step. Go to our base layer, duplicate it, head over to Opacity, create that mask, Select a different portion of your clip and adjust the scale and positioning however you like. Feel free to get really creative. Play around with the scale of your cutout, the shapes of the masks, and this is also personal preference, but even though you're chopping up your footage and moving everything around, you kind of want to line things up so they make sense and you can somewhat decipher the subject or objects in your video. For example, I'll keep all these little cutouts of my turntable in this section, and the DJ will be cut out in different ways but will still kind of piece together so you can make him out. And if you go to film Film something like this, or if you have multiple angles to work with, you don't have to use just one singular clip to edit this. You can use different angles and pull different cutouts from different shots. Now that we have our scene built out, we can stylize it. I'll start by adding a drop shadow to all these masks, and this will add some depth to these shapes. With Premiere, you can't just drop the effect on the clips, which is annoying, so we'll have to right click and nest the layer first. Then under the effects panel, drag the drop shadow effect onto your layer. In the effects controls, you can customize however you want the shadow to look. And we'll go ahead and repeat this for all the layers. Now there's a few different ways you can manipulate your collage. You can have all your layers play through at the same time and pacing, or you can move everything around like this and kind of have it all play at different times and speeds, which will give you a little more of a delayed and jumbled look. Now, if you want the scene to sort of build out and have the cutouts pop in, all you have to do is trim the beginnings of each clip and have them come in at different times like this. You can also animate each layer by using keyframes, but I'm gonna use Dave's social media pack as an example and drag one of his presets onto all my clips. So this is with the blur in animation preset. Now, if you wanna add movement to the whole scene, command A to select all your clips, right click and nest. This is gonna group all your layers together, select your nested clip, add whatever keyframes you like. In this case, I'm gonna add a keyframe under scale, drag my playhead forward and add another keyframe scaling it in. And that'll give your whole scene some movement. And lastly, we can add some elements from my paper assets pack, which I will link in the description. Take a look at some textures and incorporate them into our scene. This can also be done in After Effects, and I argue that After Effects is a much easier workflow since we are working with so many masks. Here we have another test clip, Command D to duplicate the layer. And with that layer selected, we will go ahead and create a mask by selecting this rectangle tool up here, draw out a selected portion of the screen, and under Transform, you can play around with scale and position. and we'll duplicate our layers and do the same thing over and over. We'll go ahead and put a solid color underneath everything. 
and we can much more easily add the drop shadow effect in After Effects. So we'll go over to the effects panel, type in drop shadow, drag it onto our layer, adjust however you like under the effects controls, select the effect, command C to copy it, select all our other layers and command V to paste the effect onto it. Now to add movement to the whole scene, we'll go into layer, new, null object, rename this if you'd like, then highlight all your other layers and parent them to your null object. And whatever keyframes you create under your null object will then be applied to everything. In this case, I'm gonna do the same thing and do a scale in. Finally, we can add some stuff from my paper assets pack to stylize it a bit more. And that is how we do this collage effect. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned a thing or two. As always, I'm here to try things, fail at them most likely, but also sometimes not fail. And if I don't fail and do it the right way, I will teach that to you. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I feel like I will be using this and I've learned a new thing, which is always good for the brain. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, if you end up creating some sort of content from these tutorials, send them my way. Love to see the results and I'll see you in the next one.